guys welcome to the video today we're going to do something we have not done for a while and that is talk about pastels we are going to look at soft pastels and also at oil pastels you can see here that I have this um, bento box so it's a stainless steel kind of a lunch box you can get them off Amazon or something and yeah, I just have a selection of oil pastels and a selection of soft pastels in the top tray. And the first page that I did with these, um, this one you'll see a little bit more of in the next video. It's this cafe that we went to a couple of times over summer and it has this mint green ice cream out the front. So it's this really pretty place and uh, I was just kind of doing an so this one I just did um, at home and you can see that I have done I've used soft pastels neo colors um, and oil pastels and I wanted to show you a couple of the, the kind of techniques and things and so this is um, the selection of pastels that I have in the 50 uh, box from Sennelier so I have a video about that and I did change out a couple of the colors so I went through and had a look at this as well and then I have selected some of these colors actually probably half or or so uh, and put those in the bento box and I was also um, doing this so these emblems this one here is soft pastel with uh, the roses would be the uh, oil pastel. So it's quite interesting. There are a couple of differences uh, between soft pastels and oil pastels. Obviously, that's the main differences. But one of the things that I have realized is that the oil pastels only come in a select um, colors. So there's not a huge range. Whereas pastels, I mean, there's thousands of colors. You've got so many different tints and values and um, sorry, tints and shades and just like all kinds of colors that you could want and with the oil pastels you have to mix them and um, you know part of that is kind of the quality that is about them but then it also does take time to kind of think about the colors that you have how you want to mix them so even like creating your own techniques um, for mixing and and for blending and figuring out like do I want it highly um, blended or or more textured so there's quite a lot of like different variables in even using a new medium uh, thinking about the colors that are available within that medium and yeah so you can see here like even with this emblem so there's um, you know you put the the marks down and then blending it out so that it's smooth or do I want to leave it so it's chunky uh, and then the other thing that I really like to do is to combine combine them as well so again like this would be uh, a new a new night probably and uh, I have just kind of done this very quick little sketch and I really love these like old kind of Louis style couches and yeah I am just sitting here kind of I, I didn't have a reference I just kind of made this one up and then you'll see later on the difference where I looked at some reference images to sketch something so even that can be um, you know a bit of a help but you can see here I am just laying down pastel and then also pastel pencils as well so I do really enjoy pastel pencils and yeah I'm just kind of gradually building up so I suppose I am doing it kind of in a similar way to watercolor uh, where 
I'm just laying down the lighter values and the lighter colors and then just kind of building that up. So I put several layers of the pastel down first and you can see that I'm kind of going between pastel pencils and actual pastel and I'm blending more and then I'm blending less and then I start introducing oil pastels in as well. So I quite like the different quality of the line. I like the sort of chunky aspect of it and I like the fact that um, you can see like even when you blend it I mean I suppose different papers that you use as well some will blend better some will um, not blend that well so you will end up getting different qualities um, and yeah that's even one of the things kind of to figure out like the different papers that you want to use and what was I gonna say Sorry, you can probably tell from my voice. I feel a little bit under the weather this morning, but uh, let's see. So, yeah, I just, I go between, like I start adding the oil pastel and then I will add pastel. You can see like I'm quite happy to add pastel or pastel pencil back on top of the oil pastel, whereas with watercolor, I won't add watercolor once I've put oil pastel on the page I won't use watercolor over the top of it because I think that the oils from the pastels will damage the brushes and get into the watercolors and things like that so I'm always careful to just put watercolors down as the base layers and then add oil pastels on top whereas here I'm quite happy to um, keep adding you know the pastels if they get contaminated you can just wipe them off on some paper towel so yeah I just quite enjoyed like this was just a sort of a quick sketch and this was probably even done over a couple of days so again like it's just something where at the end of the day I have been making the watercolors and then I would just sit at my desk for 10 minutes and uh yeah do something creative so I was really enjoying it is interesting as well like when I'm making the watercolors I feel like I often will go back to pencil or pastels and uh, just do something a little bit different to jog that creativity and I'm also showing you there that when I'm finished um, the sketch I don't uh, use fixative I will just uh, but I have heard that the spectra fix fixative is really good and you can tip it into a fine mist spray because it is quite a chunky spray um, but yeah I don't use any fixatives I just press it into the paper I'll just close the page and press it into the other page alternatively I do put like wax paper just the baking the baking you know a roll of what you use in the kitchen like the baking uh, wax paper and or I think it might be called parchment paper but it's the waxy um, side of it doesn't like the pastels don't adhere to it so it actually just presses them deeper into the paper so you're not losing some of that pigment so I'm also just showing you here this is a new the sketchbook I've been showing you is a new version of this Hanamula Nostalgie. So you can see that the one that's really chunky there. We're going to do a flip through of that one soon. That has been such an enjoyable sketchbook. 
In the beginning, I wasn't sure about the paper, but I have really loved this. There's a couple of things to finish off, which we'll do in that flip through video. And yeah, it's just, it's one that I really love to use pencil on the pages as well. And it also takes um, oil pastels and pastels really nicely as well. So one of the days I pulled out a couple of these, I think they're Art Spectrum, Art Spectrum pastel papers. And I wanted to, I've been kind of saving these and really wanting to use them. I kind of think about them every now and then. And um, I just thought this was a good time when I, when I have been just kind of using this dry media. So uh, I, you can see there I'm just trying a few different things. This is an actual pastel and this is the first kind of time that I've used this paper and I'm looking at, you know, how things layer and how things will blend as well. So I really love this paper. It's, it's a very, very beautiful paper, but again, um, when you're when you're starting with something new you just try kind of all different you know ways and I have also heard from you guys quite a lot that uh, Claire Fontaine it's the pastel 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 pad from Claire Fontaine uh, which I still haven't got I think one of the things about that is I don't know if I love the colors in the background uh, anyway to start with so I kind of really liked this um, art spectrum paper when I saw it at the at the art shop and I think you can also get this as a ground so I could get a white ground and then um, create my own backgrounds and tint it with whatever color that I wanted so I'm considering more like doing maybe something like that uh, but again you can see that I started so I, I started this with a sketch and I think that again I just sketched the um, the this couch out one night I just looked through a bunch of different couches and took different components from that and then uh, I started with like a very similar kind of similar in value and hue the, the first color there and just kind of adding slight bits of um, shading and then I've gone darker in value and then at the back I have kind of done this faded floral pattern so quite a few of the uh, couches like this they'll have it and you can see there that like this is the paper and then I just kind of uh, blend that in and you can see that it kind of uh, pushes the pastel in and then I'll further blend that again and so what what happens is you don't end up losing a lot of that pigment it just goes into the painting it makes the um, layer of pastel a little bit thicker which I quite like and yeah so uh, a lot of these kind of uh, couches will have some kind of floral tapestry or some kind of old tapestry and I felt like when I did this I didn't have exactly the colors that I wanted in front of me but instead of kind of going and getting different ones I just worked with what I had there so yeah very very enjoyable
I think one of the other reasons I've been avoiding this paper is because it is quite expensive and I knew that I would have to kind of just use some of it and try and figure some of these things out. So um, that's just kind of how it is, you know, if you, it's like if you, um, for anything else, but like I'll give you a baking analogy. Um, if you learn how to make chocolate chip cookies, that doesn't necessarily mean that's immediately you can bake souffles and you know banana bread and um all kinds of different beautiful baked goods you know you you even if you get one recipe down you still have to learn about other techniques and other ingredients and so it's exactly the same for art you you might learn one thing but then you want to do something else and you've got to learn all about that you would have maybe have heard the footsteps of our little dog so uh yeah I was just kind of pulling you know whatever colors I kind of had there and again I'm just like looking at how the oil pastels feel on this paper and what kind of different ways that um they would go on this paper I also tried some blending here and this is not necessarily a paper that is good for blending I don't think uh, I still really love this paper and um, I'll show you kind of the reasons why it's but again so that's what you're kind of looking at different the different techniques and um, you know the materials that you want to use can you do those techniques on those materials so hopefully this kind of makes sense and is a little bit of an insight into like my different my process for different things so even if you learn watercolor you know changing a few of the things that you do in different sketchbooks or on different papers and then again with new mediums I'm kind of looking at the same things but um then kind of you know plugging in those uh, new materials so you can see here like the texture this is what I really enjoy about the oil pastels is how you can really build up those beautiful um, textures and yeah I, I really really enjoy it so it's it's different to pastel in the way or soft pastel in the way that when you blend out the soft pastel and even if I'm kind of trying to leave bits of the soft pastel on there and kind of pressing them in and trying to build up the surface uh, which I still love I, I love both these techniques but I, I like them for different reasons um, or you know both materials but I like them for different reasons so I really enjoy um, I actually have watched a couple of like oil pastel videos lately and I really love how some artists will blend those out really really beautifully so uh, that is something that oil pastels allow you to do is to really get those soft beautiful blending techniques not on this paper but um but yeah I also really like using it in a very kind of in a way almost where it becomes oil paint so it's quite thick it's quite a textured um creates like quite it's almost like this just really textured beautiful uh, I'm not sure exactly how to explain it like a tapestry but you, you're like you, you have this whole um, kind of different world like it's it gives you it gives you a whole kind of different ability to convey things I don't know but I'll have to think a bit more about how to explain that but I do really really enjoy it and you can see here this is another different type of paper and on the right I have the oil pastels on the left and you can see they're kind of shiny and then on the left I just have the soft pastels and again I'm kind of looking for different papers and different ways to try the techniques you can also see here the difference between when I just kind of sketched out the one on the bottom uh, without kind of any references versus when I sketched the other one and I was actually looking at them and kind of seeing so that is also important to kind of have um, have some references and not necessarily just to straight up copy them but look at different aspects of 
you know the way the arms roll the 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 bend in the legs and you know different things like that so just um to finish this off i wanted to to go back to and kind of show you the technique that i used in the first uh the background of the first um, page with the ice cream so i basically laid down a ground of white oil pastel and i wanted to also try because it you know you have to kind of make your own colors here i wanted to also try putting down that kind of a more green gray and then i put um, the pearl white over the top of it but basically what i did in that first page and i really enjoyed it was i put down this white oil pastel as a ground and then i worked into that with pastel and i kind of blended it into that and softened it in so you can see like this really dark brown becomes that color that really light beautiful color when you're working it into the surface so i haven't i mean i haven't really done anything spectacular here but i'm just kind of showing you the um the marks that you can make with this and the, and kind of how it sort of can kind of soften in when you lay down that that layer and then um, that could work with all kinds of different colors as well. So I'm quite excited about this and kind of exploring that a little bit more. I used to have this amazing kind of pencil skirt and like this silk taffeta. And it had this kind of floral pattern that was um, like out of focus on it. It was just this really beautiful skirt. And that kind of reminds me of that that technique. So yeah, yeah. Um, think that is everything um it's been quite enjoyable just to have that kind of there and then to be able to pull that out the other thing here is i have been hard at work packaging up your orders i love it i love this stage when they're all kind of laid out and it's just like a little party everywhere there's little different um posies of like different orders all around the room like different little piles and bundles everywhere so i really really enjoy this i love packaging them up for you um it just does feel a little bit like christmas and also thank you for another wonderful shop update so i have been trying to figure out for quite a while like what is the kind of how can i put enough in there so that there's still a little bit a little bit left uh because i know like especially for me i'm always late to shop updates and yeah then you miss out so i i i would like to be able to have enough in there that you can get what you'd like at the shop update and then still if you watch the video a couple of days or a week later there will still be some things in the shop so i think i have finally gotten to that like sweet spot and I am, yeah, I, these are just a couple of little thank you cards. And you can also see that um, that would be a great idea for Christmas little cards with watercolor in them. Also, um, when I was packaging up these palettes, the little freebies, if you want to add them to your palette, just put a little bit of watercolor on there and just press the shells into them and they will um, stay in place and yeah you can see the little pile of uh, orders there i have still a couple of things uh, left to package up so they should be coming to you on tuesday or wednesday this week and then i still have a couple of these gorgeous palettes left so these are like bespoke marbled um palettes they're, they're really stunning in real life i think i cannot kind of quite capture on uh, camera how beautiful they are so with the pennies in them and the watercolor pearls and all of that so really really lovely uh let's see so other than that if you have any tips for working with pastels working with oil pastels let us know below if you have any favorite channels about uh, pastels i have linked a couple of the videos that i've really enjoyed in my favorite painting uh, playlist recently so you can find a couple of um, things there that I've been kind of inspired by and watching and they're slightly like it's probably still a slightly different style that I than I am 
looking for maybe or working towards but again that's the beauty of art and being able to kind of learn from each other and see you know different things kind of in um you know different things being used so uh i'm also just showing you here so i have a couple of the palettes left and this this one full pan set so this is the ancient nutmeg set and you can see so i didn't swatch this one out in the last video but this is um the dark color is called rembrandt's easel so it's just this gorgeous granulating dark kind of violet earth uh, color and that's got a little bit of um, a sparkle in it as well so it's just really beautiful and then the next one that I'm going to swatch is the pink pipe stone uh, yeah which is again is just a gorgeous color it's kind of like a different version of a burnt sienna but this one has actual uh, grains like actual granules in the paint and yeah I just love how these two uh, lay down on the paper and how and how they mix with all other colors so they'll give you a little bit of that moodiness that you're looking for in a really pretty way when you're mixing colors you don't want them heavy and um, kind of muddy and these will give you that that really nice kind of just um, beautiful coloring that you're looking for anyway guys I hope you're doing well and I will see you in the next video bye